And welcome to episode 122 of Torpreneur. It's another in our series of Meet the Res Tech. Today it is the turn of Checkfront, and we're joined today by Julianne Johnson, who is the Senior Customer Success Manager for Checkfront. Welcome to Torpreneur, Julianne. Hi, thanks for having me. We are also joined by Rob Dowling. He is the managing director of Game of Thrones tours. I know everyone who listens to the show are massive fans of Games of Thrones, uh, Game of Thrones. Welcome to Torpreneur, Rob. Thanks very much, Shane. I don't believe that for a moment. Everybody hates season eight, me included. <laughs> but uh, you can't win them all, I guess. <laughs> And also welcome back to Emily Pelletier, who is the in business development at Cyclo Service in Quebec. Welcome back, Emily. Welcome back. Yeah, it's a pleasure. <laughs> Absolutely. So if I may start with, with Checkfront. So Julianne, for people who, for our listeners who are not familiar with Checkfront, I can't imagine there's any out there, but those who are not familiar with Checkfront, can you tell us a little bit more about the company? Yeah, Absolutely. Um, so classic ResTech, we're an online booking software. We specialize in helping small tour operators to large businesses, to enterprise, get themselves online and take in bookings. Um, we've been around since 2010. We are celebrating our 10 year anniversary. So that's really exciting. Um, we have both our co-founders still with us. So we have Jason Morehouse and Grant Jurgenite, um, and they're still continuing to innovate to this day. Absolutely. And you were based in British Columbia, correct? Yes. So we're in British Columbia, Canada. So Victoria, uh, Emily, she's familiar with Canada, obviously being from Quebec. <laughs> um, and we do have a few remote employees uh, elsewhere, but generally we're all located at our office in Victoria. Fantastic. Rob, Game of Thrones tours. How long have you been working with Checkfront for? Okay, Shane. Um, well, we had our first tour to Game of Thrones, outdoor locations of Game of Thrones from seasons, I guess, one and two back then in April 2014. So I had the system live from probably Christmas 2013. So something like that. And uh, I chose Checkfront at the time because it, like, it just se it seems so long ago now in terms of the evolution of, of Restic and so on. But I had a website at the time that was on a Drupal CMS. Mm -hmm. And uh, Checkfront had an integration for Drupal. So myself and my you know, web designer said, let's give this one a go. And we really thought it looked really nice. And that's about, that's how naive I was at the time. It looked really nice and it worked. And we bought a sample ticket and it worked. And we went with Checkfront and, and uh, still and Checkfront. <laughs> and when you say look nice, was that look nice from the operator's viewpoint or look nice from the consumer's viewpoint? Well, I think from the consumer's viewpoint, in the sense of the um, their tickets are, uh, I think, exquisite. You know, they've got QR uh, codes on them now. So everything has evolved since then, of course. But the tickets look lovely and they look really clear and solid and uh, professional, I guess. And all tour operators know, especially in the beginning, so we're talking about the beginning here, like yeah. back then, remember, everyone's quality of everyone's camera on their phone even was terrible and so on. It just looked beautiful on a phone. So if you bought it on your phone, it looked really nice. And also the, um, the you know, from a user's point, I mean to say from the, uh, the operator's point of view, the, the, the display of data and reports and so on internally is very nice. Now I have used other, I've done demos, but I've also actually moved to another res tech uh, for a time and come back and as i say it's just my own personal preference i i really think it's uh, it's it's exquisite actually the, the the ticketing for customers great and how did you so let me take i know april 2014 well actually january this year seems like a long time ago let alone 2014 <laughs> to be honest oh my but gosh yes how, how did you discover Checkfront? How did you find out about them? Because you're, you're in the Republic of Ireland, I believe, or yeah. Northern Ireland. Okay, so you're in Ireland. No, the, as you can probably tell from my accent, I'm in the Republic of Ireland. Yeah, so I can I've understand you. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Well, uh, yeah, well, I you know, we can do that too, if you like. Uh, well, what a baggy. I, uh, I, I can fit in in Northern Ireland too, by the way. <laughs> so I uh, haven't, haven't been called upon to do that in a long time. But... Uh, I registered the business in the two jurisdictions. So I've got the business in the Republic and I've got mm. the business in the UK, you know, Northern Ireland. So again, um, 
I have two, two separate check fund accounts. One's in the euro currency and one's in the, you know, British pound, of course. And um, they, I mean, it looks seamless in the website. You would never think that the one website, if you were to browse it as a, a customer, you would never think there's actually two accounts there. And you can uh, customize to a certain extent the display of the drop code. That is to say uh, that, you know, user, people who are uh, shopping for uh, uh, res tech may like to know that most of them are web, it's a software as a service. So the, uh, the booking system is embedded within your website and the customer is actually looking through your website, so to speak, into CheckFund. And it sits inside my website beautifully. And uh, I tried, I, I don't know if I can name names, but I tried Bookio at the time. You know, I, I tried I tried a lot of the others, Resdi, Resgo. Yeah. And uh, I, as I say, I thought uh, CheckFund looked the nicest. And back then I was just looking for some basic features, you know, as I say, that it would, that it would, uh, it would be easy to purchase and so on and look good. And that, that was the extent of my uh, uh, reason for choosing it in the beginning. But everything has evolved and all the integrations and so on has evolved enormously since, since then, obviously. Sure. Um, Julianne, you work in customer success. So the cool thing is you're not in sales here, right? So you're post sales. But what are some of the things that you hear your customers saying to you about Checkfront that makes life easier for them as activity and tour operators? Oh, gosh. Well, echoing what Rob said, that they do find it quite intuitive. And it's just there. And you're setting up your system as you would anticipate. Or if you do have, you know, complex or maybe the need for, to be more flexible, that we're able to help you fit CheckFront for those business needs that you would have. Um, we have that amazing support team that is available to help out if you need that guidance. Um, great documentation as well. Um, how I like to think CheckFront is, I like to think CheckFront's kind of like your top employee. You're gonna train it as best as you can and make it work to how you want it to operate and that's what it's going to do for you. Um, it works, you know, 24, Seven takes bookings when you want it and when everybody else is asleep. Um, yeah, and also other things like we have amazing integrations. I think a lot of our customers talk about those. Um, uh, most of the time when a company comes to me, they're saying, hey, I'm working with my accountant and you know, I need to get X, Y, and Z report. And I'm like, hey, are you already on QuickBooks Online? We have an integration there and it saves them those extra steps that they thought they might have had to do within CheckFront. And about um, customization to the business, um, for example, I know that the Game of Thrones um, tours website, um, it has it embedded in the website, but can you have the platform, for example, on top of the page of the website or a separate page that comes out? Uh, can you customize these kinds of things? Yeah, sure. I'll jump in on that. Um, so there are many different ways to integrate into the websites. It depends on the operator's, per, uh, I guess, like preference. So you can have it embedded on your website and have your experience there, or you could have it redirect to what we have is called a customer booking page, and you can have it completely separate from your website. Um, you can get super fancy and utilize our API and completely customize your booking experience with that. Um, but of course, you will have to have your own trusted developers and third party integrators along with you, but we'll be there to help support you and guide you through our documentation, no problem. And about the reports that you were talking about, it was one of my questions that I had for you today. Um, it is, is it easy, like without calling anyone to get a report of something very specific um, at any time in your system? Yeah, yeah. So we have a lovely drop down selector that says reports and we have things called sales report, revenue report, transactions, even an activity log, which I'm sure maybe Rob can um, speak to that too, but having track of every interaction your staff is making, you have that in your account as well. Okay. Um, do you have another question or? Go for it, Emily. Yeah, You're okay. the shopper here, you go for it. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Um, so from the two other, um, you know, booking platforms that we've seen, um, 
you know, in the two last interviews, they have a different pricing model. And I'm not saying one is best or another. I just want to know about yours and how you define its benefits. So you, if I'm not wrong, you have a monthly uh, pricing. And I think it's depending also of the number of bookings. So can you explain to me um, like the benefits of having that pricing model? Well, just to speak to day one, uh, Jason and the team, they went forward with the subscription model and that is kind of like our foundation. Um, the majority of our 5,000-ish customers are on that monthly pricing model and it is based on volume because as you increase with volume, the more resources that you take from our software or you need maybe more technical support. So that's how we base that volume there as well. Um, and a year and then, like in a year like this year, where some businesses from came from a lot of volume to zero, um, did you have a solution of uh, to offer them, for example, um, stopping their payments or next year uh, uh, a less big payment? Or do you have a solution for these uh, companies? Um, well, personally, from what I know, is our business gave a lot of flexibility with our operators. I don't know if I have an exact number or it might be posted somewhere on our blog, but we definitely gave a lot of relief in forms of credits to a lot of operators who are struggling um, or deferring payments as well. We are very sympathetic and understanding that we are all in this together and we're all trying to navigate this new world of COVID. Um, but in terms of pausing accounts, we have another solution for that, that we're hoping that people if they don't want to necessarily pay that monthly subscription, we have introduced something called our flex account or a flex fee, um, which would be an offset to your guest booking. So if you contact our sales team and you're qualified for that plan, um, they can vet you for that one. And then you're not having to pay that subscription fee if that's not the subscription or the pricing model you wanna pay your software provider. Very good. I, I like flexibility, so I'm happy to hear that you're thinking about it. Thank you. Uh, Emily, I can tell you a, a little uh, horror story uh, regarding pricing, uh, you know, that happened to me and my company. Uh, let's see now. It was actually last year, uh, 2019. So during 2018, I discovered, and I hope I'm not getting too technical here now, but that I had a company uh, listing on TripAdvisor. But TripAdvisor changed the way it displayed tours. And instead of showing company listings, it showed product listings, you know, experience with a little yellow book in the button. And that is another, an OTA Viator embedded inside TripAdvisor. And I hadn't so, uh, signed up to that because prior to that, you know, Game of Thrones is so popular, the coach was full all the time and I didn't have to do that. And everybody around me told me, why would you pay people commission? Don't pay anybody any commission. Why, why would you even do that? And it, it was working great until something outside of my control, the way it displayed somewhere else by someone else who was entitled to do what they want with their platform, changed the way it displayed. And I realized I'd made a mistake. And what I also did at the same time was I changed my booking system. So <laughs> I told Julianne this yesterday, it was nothing personal, but I was really nervous. I thought I'd really messed up. And, uh, you know, when you play the Game of Thrones, you live or you die. And certainly in coach tours for Game of Thrones in Ireland, if you make a mistake, you could die. And uh, the buses were half full, whereas they were always previously full. And I, uh, I migrated from... Uh, from Checkfront to this other booking system, and therefore 0.1% per booking. Imagine, right? Amazing. No more monthly subscription. But then they increased them to 2.9%, which is 29 times higher. Now, just to give you some idea, in the month of August, my company would have like six figures of sales because it's like 21 buses a week. And when you calculate how much it costs in a month, it was several thousand British pounds a month from one small change in the percentage of the fees. Now that doesn't apply to every tour operator because you know, you're know you more vulnerable if you have large volumes of sales. So it's for that reason that for me, having a flat fee, I know 
I will never, I'll tell you the truth, I know I will never be actually destroyed by a flat fee. Mm -hmm. There's always a risk that the, the, the pricing that you sign up to initially on a per transaction fee can change. The subscription can also change, but the subscription will never become 29 times higher than it was, <laughs> you know? So, the, so, so you do need to pay very close attention to those things. But I guess the point I'm making, Emil, is it's a bit more complicated than looking at what the prices are right now, because the prices can change. Mm -hmm. the prices can change you know, prices for stuff changes all the time you know what i think that uh the people that will be listening to this uh, interview will uh, the people that are convinced uh, of either uh pricing plan uh will really take your opinion right now and uh, you know <laughs> it, yeah. it's it's yeah, a like, very like good way of seeing it you know um my the yeah. reason why I, I'm asking about that is because you know some business, businesses are smaller so they they don't make like a six figure uh, sure. um, you know um, you know um, I'm not uh, income of sorry. and um, at the same time uh, they they're not sure of how many customers they'll have their first year second year third year so either plan is good i think it's just that you have to adapt it to your situation so i'm yeah. happy to hear your way of seeing well your you know what was good for you because yeah, other people I, it would be good for them you know so the subscription system is a bit like you know your mobile phone so okay it could, might be a little bit more but you know that's what you're going to be paying every month the fee system is dependent on if you're successful so you better not be successful Emil, or you're going to be bankrupted by it That, you know, you know what I mean. So again, as I say, I, this is bus tours I do, so it might it doesn't apply to everybody, but the um, the per transaction fee is uh, is one that can evolve quickly. It can it can surprise you if you sit down with your calculator and actually look at what August what what yeah. in August you might be surprised. You might pay much in January or February, but you might pay a lot. Yeah. More. And I'm asking myself also, um, how do you find uh, refunds uh, with Checkfront? Are they easy for you to do? Um, yeah, so how do, how do they work? Okay, so I, the way I've set up my Checkfront, it's in the website. And, you know, when you purchase a ticket, it passes through the payment gateway. It's connected to Stripe, the payment gateway. Mm -hmm. And a few days later, the money, you know, goes into my bank account. Now, if let's say this summer, uh, well, March, you know, everyone was looking for refunds. So I went into Stripe. No, excuse me. I went into Checkfront and you've just got a, a simple button refund and you can refund the full amount of the ticket, which you will do if you can't. You can refund a partial amount. For example, if there were uh, three people booked on a tour and they wanted to, they've already paid and they wanted to change it to two people. So you can partially refund and it looks really nice because you send them confirmation of the new ticket and down at the bottom of the ticket in red, it just says minus whatever dollars, you know, and they can see, okay, that amount of dollars has come back to my card and it takes a few days. And so it's very simple as one, just click in the system. As I say, you can make a full refund or a partial refund. And can you change the reservation also easily for, for let's say they want to change the tour and then it, it either charges the difference or refunds the, the difference or? Yeah, now do you mean take change to a completely different tour? Okay, well, in that case, a different tour rather than the same tour on a different date, I would create for them, I would make it up myself I would make up a booking for them. And when I create the booking inside the system, it's always, its status is always reserved in Checkfront, it's reserved in blue. And there's a little drop down option where you can drop it down and you can change the status from reserved to canceled, to deposit, to paid. So I would move it down to paid because they've already paid me. Okay, they paid me on the other item, but they've paid me. So I move it to paid. And then there's a little button email So I put their name and email in, you know, it's on the other booking. So I've got the other booking open. I just put the data across and then I send and I say, here's your new ticket for your new tour. And, you know, there's no increase or decrease. There's no refund or there's no increase in price, let's suppose in this case. And from the customer's point of view, they receive something, it's written paid in green 
And all they've got to do is bring it to the pickup point. And it's great because they've got a little Q or uh, code, you know, on the ticket. So if they hold up their phone in COVID-19, the guide can hold up the Checkfront app and literally like tap it like a supermarket and it goes beep, and inside the system there's a little tick that person is checked in so if you had a walking tour and you just did everyone's phone get everyone so customers are really great when you know you, you write it in the in the ticket please present your ticket on a smartphone screen and we just tap tap the guy just taps their phone against the screen and inside the system we see tick 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 you know, and then somebody's forgotten their ticket and it's no problem. The guy can see a list anyway of, of the people and do it manually, you know. I, so, I do um, just want to interject so yeah. there yeah, for payment processors. Um, just because the payment processor you selected with Stripe, it will have different capabilities per payment processor and different flow as well. So depending on, you know, what Rob was saying before, it sounds like, you know, Stripe that's holding his money, Checkfront does not hold the money. We're just the integrator. So you can select any payment processor you want. I love how he described the refund process because that's exactly how it is. And it is very easy. You look at your ticket or we call it an invoice as well, but you know, UK, North American lingo. Um, and it's just a transaction tab and you can see all the transactions. So depending on your payment provider, if it's within a certain authorization phase, you should be able to make your refunds um, accordingly to that. Um, and then in addition to that, um, I wanted to point out when editing a booking, yeah, you can absolutely create a new invoice if you wanted to, or you could edit that existing invoice if you wanted to. And if your payment provider also provides tokenization and it's actually a, an increased cost, you should be able to charge that card too. But again, it's dependent on your payment provider. Okay. Yeah, sorry, and sorry, Emily, I got that, that she's absolutely right. The way I said I can <laughs> drop down the list and change from, you know, booked, paid or whatever, it's reserved, paid. I can also change the item, that is to say the product and just change it to another product name. That's inside yeah. the system. So we don't have but to But that's really the beauty. Paper. You can make Once it upon any time I did, you I want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can make it any process you want to. And when he was talking about the drop down menu, that's something we call booking statuses. And you can customize that as well. So whatever process you have, we try to be flexible for that. And also, I was asking myself for the people walking in um, that are not reserving online, do you consider that a booking or not? Like since probably the payment can go elsewhere than through uh, the, the payment gateway of the system, like for example, at our oh, shop, tracking be, bookings. Yeah, so the walkings, you know, um, the people walking Every in. Every time, and, I believe how we track it is we have unique booking IDs. So anytime a ticket or an invoice is created, um, it has a unique booking ID and that's counted as a booking. So okay. in Rob's case, if he was trying to reduce <laughs> the amount of bookings that he was cre creating, it would be wise to edit the existing one. Mm. Okay. Very good. <laughs> Pro tip, Rob, I'll help you out. <laughs> also, uh, also, it's something that is very important for um, the business I work for is the multi-language um, parameter, uh, you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I might, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. And you know, I haven't been speaking much English, English in the You're last doing great, Amy. You're better than us, maybe. <laughs> yeah. But yes, I'm always looking for my words these days, but normally I'm not like that. <laughs> but yes, so I, I was asking myself on the website, if my website is first in French, will your booking platform appear in French? Um, or is it easy to switch from French to English to book or not? So we have multi-language um, selection. So you can basically create the different translations you want to offer. We have system translations um, and you can also add to that as well, but you would select one to be your preference. Um, and then depending on how you have it on your website, if it's embedded, I'm not sure if Rob has different languages, it would show that it has language and you could select a different one from that screen. Um, you know, Google Translate has those capabilities as well too. But if you want to translate the system, I recommend using the Checkfront translation. 
And uh, another question, I have a list, you know, um, a question uh, I have is uh, the connectivity, you know, with the OTAs like TripAdvisor and all. Um, would these reservation count as a booking also? I guess you answered that question a little early on, but um, how do you connect um, the OTAs to the booking platform and do you consider them bookings or? or uh... Uh, oh, you accidentally muted but I feel like it would be considered a booking because it is creating a booking ID, but mm. really that might be a follow-up question that I have to uh, get back to you on. Um, but uh, Emily, I'll try to still answer while you're figuring out your audio or are you back? I think you cast a spell at Julianne as she was asking a tricky question oh. of you. I know, <laughs> and I didn't have the button. answer, but and if I don't, I will follow up with you and get no. you to that exact answer as well. But in terms of connecting to OTAs, if you have the OTA account and you're approved on it, because I know some have, you know, different guidelines like country or tour type. Um, if you have it, then we're able to connect to that as well. Um, the only thing that you need to keep in mind is restrictions on the OTA end as well. Um, they might have something where you have to have certain ticket types. So then your check front account and your offerings would have to match if you wanted to connect to a particular OTA. Perfect. Thank you. And I don't know if you saw all of that, but I had a problem with the, the yeah. connection. Uh, now everything is back. Different. Everything is back. <laughs> Excellent. How, how does Checkfront cope with or what do you offer in terms of digital waivers, Julianne? Uh, yeah, so we have digital waivers uh, and documentation. Um, so you can customize it kind of WYSIWYG style um, and feed in information from the customer's booking as well. Um, and it will be attached to the ticket or the invoice. Um, we also have additional something that I think is very important during COVID is we have per guest detail too that you can put in with that. So then every guest would have to sign a waiver as well. Right. Um, just going back quickly to, to payment. So you mentioned you have the subscription model, then you have payment flex. So if someone is wanting to switch to you today and they want to go on the flex, which is the booking fee model, is that something that's open to everyone or uh, how, how do you, how does that work? How do people qualify for that option? Yeah, well, the best people to answer that is our sales team, but I do know that there are certain restrictions for countries and also payment provider, because we need a way to be able to collect that fee without having some sort of depository or, you know, sending you an invoice. So we've partnered with Stripe on that. So you have to be using Stripe and you have to be in a particular country. And also I believe the other qualifications would be things like booking volume, which would be also booking value as well, because we want to make sure that we would obviously get paid as well too. Yeah. And I believe that's a 5% booking fee. Is that correct? I believe it is a 5% booking fee. Yes. But I believe if you talk to our sales team, I feel like that's where they'll have those conversations on what the fee is. But five yeah. is our maybe, guest fee. Uh, maybe we can get some clarification and we can add that to the show notes today, which is at uh, tourpreneur.com forward slash one, two, two for our listeners who can go and, and check that out. That might save some time with, with people reaching out to you. Um, Rob, um, I know we have Julianne here, but I don't want you to be embarrassed by this question. Um, what is the one feature or function you wish Checkfront would offer that they don't currently? Okay. Um, I won't say it's a, it's a concern that I would uh, confine specifically to Checkfront, but kind of all of them. But we've got a bit of downtime now, you know, with the lockdown and stuff. So I've got a chance to think about this aspect that's been in the back of my mind and it's everything to do with mobile payments, Google Pay, you know, particularly in India. There's a vast number of uh, Game of Thrones fans in India that seems to be infinite. And so many will go to the UK. So it's very recent that they're all in Google Pay. So I think the landscape on the payment side is gonna evolve quick in the next 10 years. Um, with uh, mobile wallets and things like that. And, you know, I could be wrong. It could still be Visa, MasterCard and Amex in 10 years' time. But uh, it'll be an important uh, consideration of mine that, you know, people can actually buy tickets by whatever means of payment they have 
uh, in the in the future. And that would matter more to me now than, for example, a marketplace where we can share drop code or, uh, you know, a mail chip integration or, uh, you know, this is uh, this is sales we're talking about. Mm. So mm. it's not really it's not really a criticism right now, but uh, because they have a, a API connection to get your guide API connection to the other OTAs, you know, like Viator or the Reserve of Google. So they're uh, nothing nothing uh, alarming there we're, we're good with apis there but the the part of the back end i would look at and if i was looking at other booking systems i would look at would be uh you know what's what's going on in the evolution of of uh, payments you know different forms of of paying for tickets mm -hmm. julianne is that something uh check front and jason and grant are, are looking into that's a really good question, but I know for sure that we're in 92 countries for payment providers and um, offerings. So every time something can become available or we're approached, they go through our partner program and we vet that. And if there's a number of customers needing a certain type of, you know, payment gateway or integration, we definitely pull those things into consideration for our roadmap. But things like payments, like I do foresee something like that in our future, but I can't per se sure <laughs> yeah absolutely i mean I, I think it is something's coming out I, I finally succumbed and signed up you know for the apple credit card on my phone and you know yeah. i didn't think i'd be getting that's how i that. do all my payments is i do through my mobile phone but it is my mastercard but the right. tap feature yeah absolutely um and in terms of customer support because rob is in ireland you are in victoria canada what are your support hours so our support hours were 24 seven, but now we are operating between actually 8 a.m. to 12 uh, a.m. PST. So we have reduced those, but what we are able to still achieve is a 98-ish percent CSAT store, which is our um, customer satisfaction rating. So I would say that no customers ever felt like that. They weren't answered in a timely manner, even though we are not 24 seven at this time. Um, but yeah, we have lots of things that are in place to monitor our system as well. So we have lots of processes and safeguards to ensure that if all of a sudden maybe a third party provider that we have partnered with maybe has a system down, we have systems in place to ping the appropriate team to make sure that Checkfront has its excellent uptime. Fantastic. Emily, uh, any questions as we wrap up here? Uh, well, last question, uh, what do you do for uh, guide management and um, equipment management? So for guide and equipment management, so we don't have any guide type management within Checkfront itself. We have definitely different ways of, you know, working with that flow or that need with that customer. And then in terms of equipment rentals, like a lot of people have not only just um, activity rentals, but they could have just specified equipment. We have ways of sharing inventory as well across multiple offerings. Um, so Checkfront can get very, very complex or robust or flexible that way. Perfect. Thank you very much. And Rob, Thank any you. final comments for you for our listeners who can say who are out there, they're tour operators, they, they want to pick a new booking platform. What would your advice to them be? I thought about that question, you know, uh, in the run up to the show, Shane, and uh, I would say this, um, if someone's in the market looking for, uh, you know, as you said at the start, there's over 100 now, uh, based on, you know, the 80-20 principle, the 20% of them have 80% of the business, I guess you could narrow it down to maybe 20, but that's still a lot. And um, a lot of the technology is converging, meaning a lot of them can do a lot of the same stuff, not all exactly the same stuff, but again, most of the things you wanted to do, most of them can kind of do it. So one of the, as well as price, uh, Emily, and, and for your listeners, the other thing I'd suggest people consider, uh, particularly long-term, because you know when you're working with a booking system, it's a nightmare when you move to another booking system. And believe me, it's even worse when you move back. <laughs> so like migrating is, is painful. And uh, so it's good to get it right in the beginning. And I would say, you know, there was a documentary out on Netflix early in, earlier in the year called The Social Dilemma. Many people may have seen it. 
And it was kind of trying to get people to think about, you know, we all use Facebook for free, but really what is Facebook or, or you know, other social media platforms, how, how do they view us? So I would say to, to listeners, think about the res tech company. How do they view you? It's an interesting thing to think about. If, they, if they're connected to an OTA, you know, how do they view you? I'm not trying to preempt the answer to that question, but just what relationship do they have you? They will give you customer service and stuff like that. Some of the, uh, the it's kind of a bit like Game of Thrones, picking your, which, 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 which house you're going to align with, which flag you're going to rally toward. And in my case, I, you know, you can probably tell from, from or the way I've been speaking earlier on, I kind of like Jason Morris, like I've never met him, but I've seen him on, on YouTube and stuff, and he seems like an unassuming guy, and I think he's going to be independent, and like over time, when you start OTAs, acquiring booking systems and so on, he's likely to kind of uh, focus on his, his, his bannermen, his team, his, his customers, and try and be independent in the middle of the, the wars to come, as they say in Game of Thrones. So I think uh, like I, I just my choice was to choose an independent operator so that I'm kind of not too deeply involved with any of the OTAs and I can kind of you know connect to them but not be part of their team, be independent. But so I came to that conclusion by thinking about how do the operators see me? And uh, you know, do they do they want to help me, or do are they offering me all sorts of stuff and to enticements? And why are they offering me such free stuff and all these enticements? You know, things like that. So that would be my advice: is think about how the how, these days on YouTube you can you can Google the, the bosses of these companies and listen to them speak and think about think about them as people and uh, think about if you'd like to team with them. Very good. Fantastic advice. Fantastic. Well, thank you, all three of you, for giving up some of your valuable time. I know you're very busy for coming on to the Meet the ResTech series. Rob, I would love to invite you on to a future episode of the show. I would love to you learn should. more the story of, of Game of Thrones tour. I know my listeners will be screaming for that as well. Yeah, I'd be delighted, Shane. Uh, I, as I say, I like to talk, as you can tell, so I'd be, I'd be very happy to do that sometime. <laughs> Fantastic. Julianne, thank you very much for coming on. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Thanks, Merci beaucoup. Ça fait plaisir. <laughs> Au revoir. Au revoir.